Hi and welcome back. In this section we're going to learn about layer masks and this is a very exciting tool to learn about. There are so many things you can do with it. In fact there are so many ways to use them and create them that it can get pretty overwhelming. But as with everything I'm going to start with a very basic version of it. I'm going to simplify it and walk you through it step by step so that when this section is done you'll have a really strong sense of what you can do with layer masks, how to use them, and some shortcuts and keystrokes and tips to make it all easier. So to introduce layer masks to you I'm going to refer back to a video that we were just looking at when we were whitening this lioness's teeth. And we're going to just recap that and then we'll get deep into some awesome techniques that we can use with layer masks to do things like create lettering that has a wood grain to create a partially color partially black and white image to blur the background but not the foreground and things like that okay so first let's make this a little smaller so this line is not right in my face and then we're going to copy our background image so we're working off a copy not on, right on the background image and then we're going to do our selection like we did before and I'm just going to do this super quick so that I'm not wasting any of your time get our quick select tool use our square brackets to make it smaller actually I'm going to zoom back in sorry and then we'll quickly select these teeth and I'm not even going to do a great job because I'm just going to show you this is basically just an example so I have those teeth selected and this is the important part. I have the selection made and then I go to my adjustment layers and we were working with hue and saturation to take the yellow out of the teeth. So we select that. I'm going to double click to get rid of that and go back into my adjustment layer. And remember I was talking about how this shows you the teeth that have been selected and masked off. Well, this is a layer mask. And so instead of working with a live selection, you can see that these are not selected anymore. What we're working with is this mask. And so what I didn't explain to you before was what all of this means. So the black part in a layer mask is the part that essentially is being hidden. And the white part is the part that's going to be shown. So when we go into our properties panel for our adjustment layer and we go and we lighten things or darken things, you can see because the white part is the only part that's being shown or affected, then when we change the lightness it only changes the white portion of our layer mask. So if I want to brighten this lion's teeth and unyellow them a little bit, I can do that. And of course when you click it on and off it shows the difference. And that's what a layer mask does. So there are a couple of important things you need to know about layer masks. The first one is that you have to be selected on them to make any effects on them. If I'm selected in the adjustment or on another image then changes that I make are not going to affect the layer mask. So it's very important to pay attention to the layers panel while you're working over here with layer masks to make sure that you're selected on the right thing at the right time. You'll know what I mean as we progress because if you're selected on the wrong thing, if you're selected over here and you're trying to adjust your layer mask, you'll see it not working. So that's your cue to be like, oh yeah, I need to go back and actually select my layer mask, okay? So that's one thing. Another thing that's really cool is you can actually move layer masks. So I can grab this layer mask and I can just delete it if I wanted, for instance. Let's just do that for a second. It's going to ask if I want to delete it. You can turn this dialog box off if you want. But you can click delete and it deleted the layer mask. And you'll notice now my adjustment to the hue and saturation where I lightened this is now affecting my entire image because I no longer have the mask blocking out all of the rest of the image except for the teeth. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Z to bring that back. Okay, so now that it's back, the black part is protecting 
or blocking the image underneath. I'm only affecting the white parts, okay? The other thing is that you can move a layer mask to another layer. So I can just click this and drag it and go down to this layer and drop it. And now I've placed it on another layer. And this is not a layer that you would want to have that layer mask on, but I'm just showing you that you can do that. Let's move that back up. The other thing you can do is copy it to another layer. So if I'm clicked on that, I can hit the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, press the key, left click, and drag it. Notice that I get the two arrows, a black arrow and a white arrow. Drag it down here and release. And now instead of moving it to another layer, I've actually just copied it to another layer. And you can do that as many times as you like to copy this layer mask onto different layers. We don't want that one there, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and delete it. If it says apply mask layer before we were moving, I don't want to apply it to the layer. I just want to get rid of it, so I'm just going to say delete. And then finally, if I want to just apply this layer and this mask or this adjustment to the layer below it, which can be very important at times, then what you're going to do is hit Alt on a PC option on a Mac, just like we did to copy the layer mask. But instead of hovering right over the layer mask, I'm going to hover between the two layers right here. And when I hit Alt, you kind of have to move your cursor around. You see that it turns into this little arrow with a box. When you left click that, you'll see a little arrow, like a down arrow here. What that means is that this layer is only affecting the layer right beneath it. And so if I go ahead and hide this layer beneath us to reveal the bottom background layer, if you watch the teeth, you'll see that this mask and this adjustment is not affecting the layer down here. If that arrow wasn't there, this layer would affect all the layers below it. But when that's there, it's only affecting this layer below it. So I'll toggle this off a couple times so you can see that it's affecting that. And then if you want to not have it attached anymore you can hit the alt key again and it's going to have a slash through the arrow now and if i click it again then it's unconnected from this layer and it affects all layers so if i hide this layer you'll see the teeth don't change because this adjustment layer is still working on top of that okay okay so those are just a couple of little like house cleaning tips so that you have a sense of how to use layer masks and kind of move them around. In the next lecture, we're gonna dive into actually getting some stuff done with them. And I'm gonna show you some really powerful ways that you can use them. So take a minute and play with a layer mask. Just create one through an adjustment layer. And remember, the way you do that is you first make a selection. And let's just, I'll just do a quick selection with a lasso tool out here in the bushes. You make your selection. Once it is selected, when you create an adjustment layer, that selection is going to become a layer mask. So let's do a black and white, or sorry, brightness contrast. Double click the adjustments to close them. And now I have a layer mask with that big circular selection. And when I make adjustments to the brightness and contrast, it's only going to affect the white part of that layer mask. So when I increase the contrast or decrease the contrast, or when I increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, it's only going to affect the white part of my mask. Okay, play around with that and I'll see you in the next lecture.